Hello, welcome to another video. I have a delta epsilon proof of a limit. And this one is slightly different from what we're used to. Typically, we'll have a finite limit and we'll state the condition for the limit being true. And what we usually say is for all, for every epsilon greater than zero and for every delta greater than zero, if the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then we have um, the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. This is typically what we write for epsilon and delta greater than zero, okay? We say this is the case if we have this claim that and we say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l. This is what we usually state, that if the limit of this function is l, then we can say that if x minus a is less, absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then f of x minus l is less than epsilon. The problem with this, using it here, is that we do not have a finite limit. Okay, and because we do not have a finite limit, it is impossible for you to say, okay, I know what L is because infinity is not finite. So this definition will not work. This is the definition you should imagine. Look at the function that we have. We have the limit of one over X squared. This is what the graph looks like. And you notice that the limit from the right is positive infinity. The limit from the left is positive infinity. So we say that the limit of this is positive infinity. Which means, if you can imagine a number, no matter how big the number is, so let's say 247 billion, okay? If you get close enough to zero, the limit of this function will still be greater than that number, 247 billion billion because the limit is infinity we just want to be able to show that if you stay close enough to zero your limit will be infinity so we're trying to be as close as possible so our delta is going to be very small whatever number you can imagine can be as big as anything we just need to prove that if delta is small enough the limit of this function will be bigger than any number you can imagine Let's do it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to say, hey, let's imagine a number. We say let a big number, let's say let m be a number we know that is greater than zero. M is that number, two, 247 billion, right? I don't know why that number keeps coming to my head. But th let M be that number. Now, we know. What we want to show is that there exists a delta. We want to show, we want to find a delta such that If delta is small enough, okay, that is the gap between x and zero is less than delta, this way. If the absolute value of x minus zero is less than delta, that is if delta is small enough, this gap is small enough, we're looking for that small gap. If we can get this delta, then this limit one over x squared will always be greater than this number we're talking about i've already explained that but this is the sentence that if delta is small enough that is the distance of x look 
So this is zero. This is where we're calculating the limit. If the values of x you're using are close enough to zero, then the limit you're going to get for this function will be greater than any known number that you can imagine. That's the concept here. So how do we show that? Well, this is what you do. The same concept. You manipulate what you have to get what you want. So what we're going to say is, let's go here. If 1 over x squared is greater than m, what do you see? If we flip this, we know that x squared will be less than 1 over m. That's, that's a basic principle of um, inequalities, right? But we don't want x squared. We want to take the square root of both sides. If you take the square root of x squared, what do you get? It's the absolute value of x. I've often said this in my videos, that the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. That's why on this side, we usually get plus or minus. Okay, so this is 1 over m square root. So, well, the square root of 1, so we can just say that the absolute value of x is less than 1 over the square root of m. Or you can leave it this way. But look at this. That's this. I can actually rewrite this expression to be x minus 0. You can see that. So, actually, I can write this as x minus 0 is less than 1 over the square root of m. So now, clearly, I can claim that this is the delta I've been looking for, 1 over the square root of m. There exists a delta. And once you've found a delta, you're done with your proof. I'm going to now say let delta be equal to 1 over the square root of m. That's it. This is all I need to show, okay? Once you have this, go back to the claim from the beginning. What was the claim? This was the claim, that if we can find a, if we can find a delta, we want to show that we want to find a delta such that if this delta exists, then this is always true. Well, we have claimed that the delta exists. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? If this delta exists, is this true? I know it's true. How do I know it's true? This is what I'm going to do. <laughs> Too much drama. <laughs> I'm going to just go back to the sentence here and say, watch. I'm going to say that is less than delta means that the absolute value of x is less than delta. What did I say delta is? This guy. So absolute value of x is less than 1 over the square root of m. I'm going to square both sides. This becomes x squared is less than 1 over m. I'm going to flip both sides. 1 over x squared. This sign changes to greater than, and this is m. Boom! We're back to the beginning. This was the claim that if we can find a delta, then this will always be greater than m. And that's what you've got. You're done. Delta epsilon proof is not that difficult. Just understand what you're looking for and manipulate from the beginning, and you're going to get to the ending. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.